This is Super Yacht News with Eve Sisman. Hi, welcome back to the channel. So recently we saw some posts on Twitter or X uh, talking about Mark Zuckerberg's yacht and the reasons for the yacht being registered in the Marshall Islands or flying a Marshall Islands flag. Now the title of this article read Exclusive Mark Zuckerberg's $300 million yacht docked in Fort Lauderdale flying Marshall Islands flag in attempt to avoid paying US taxes. Now I'm not going to promote the account because it was quite a toxic account. Uh, I had to scroll through it for a few minutes and it made me want to delete my account and never again go back to Twitter. Um, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to, um, put that on you. But the gist of the article is that if you can call it an article is that, um, it was an attempt to avoid paying US taxes, uh, suggesting that, uh, it would be just as easy to fly a US flag on the vessel. The thing is, uh, it's very common for vessels to have flags of convenience and it is related to tax in many ways, but there are very different reasons for not having a US flag on a vessel. US regulations about registering a yacht over a certain size makes it a very difficult affair and places many restrictions on how the yacht can be operated. The regulations in the US has traditionally meant that yachts over 300 gross tons were not eligible to fly a US flag. Zuckerberg's yacht is 5,000 gross tons in comparison. Now, until 2018, the US law defined a yacht as a vessel uh, whose volume was a maximum of 300 gross tons. The law was written in 1920, but was never updated. A US Coast Guard legislation failed to differentiate between a merchant vessel and, a com and commercial yachts, and uh, therefore they were subject to US Coast Guard inspections as seagoing motor vessels. Now, the Coast Guard's inspection requirements were designed for cargo ships and other merchant vessels, and these standards of build required meant it was impossible for yachts to meet those requirements. Now, there were two notable exceptions to this, the owner of Motor Yacht Limitless and the owner of Motor Yacht Freedom, who were both able to get waivers. Uh, the owner of Limitless got one through the US Congress and the owner of Motor Yacht Freedom got his by the US Coast Guard. Now, in 2018, a bipartisan bill was put forward that changed the laws of super yacht registration in the US for yachts larger than 300 gross tons. The bill was signed into law by then President Trump on the 13th of August, 2018. Incidentally, Donald Trump was briefly a super yacht owner himself, actually buying a yacht from a Middle Eastern arms dealer, but that's for another story. Uh, the new law means that there are no longer any limits on length and gross tonnage. However, with the new law, there are still a number of caveats. Uh, the captain and crew would all have to be US citizens. Uh, you cannot charter a private yacht whilst flying the US flag, and it's only f as it's only for private use. Uh, now, chartering is a very popular thing with owners as a way to pay towards the running costs of a yacht. You know, they don't like spending their own money. So each charter for a yacht like Zuckerberg's can cost over a million dollars per week. Uh, that's a lot of money, even to a billionaire. The yachts can also not carry any cargo, which sounds, you know, kind of obvious. Well, it's not a cargo ship, but, you know, if he wants to take some stuff from his, uh, from uh, Florida to his house in Hawaii, then he can't load it onto his own yacht and carry it there because it's illegal under these rules. And also the owners of large yachts must disclose the identity of the yacht's beneficial owner to the Coast Guard, the US Coast Guard, uh, which is not probably probably not very popular with owners who want to keep that a secret. And there may remain many more rules and regulations on registering your yacht in the US, including having to comply with the Merchant Marine Act, also known as the Jones Act, and even the Passenger Vessel Services Act can apply to yachts, which is a law dating back to 1886. So it's very complicated. I'm not going to go fully into it in this episode of Super Yacht News, but one of the reasons why the Jones Act can get very expensive for owners is this. The law allows US seamen to bring uh, actions against ship owners based on claims of unseaworthiness or negligence, uh, rights not afforded by common international maritime law. In fact, there is a case going to trial in the US in September by the crew or by a, no a number of crew of the, the super yacht Utopia 4. Um, seven of the crew whom were injured when the yacht crashed into a tanker in the Bahamas in 2021 are taking legal action against the owner of the yacht, Lauren Riddinger, as she or her comp the company that owns it through her 
is refusing to pay, allegedly refusing to pay wages for the crew, hospital bills for those who were injured in the accident. And they're suing under the Jones Act. Uh, this is the preliminary statement from that uh, lawsuit. It says, this is an action for Jones Act negligence, unseaworthiness and unpaid maintenance and cure brought by the plaintiff, uh, Motiot Utopia 4. The plaintiff seeks a trial by jury to recover the amounts due for Jones Act negligence, unseaworthiness and maintenance and cure, consequential damages, attorney's fees and costs and punitive damages. Now, he, that's a, that um, lawsuit is brought by one person, but there are seven people all who all filed at the same time. And I believe, I haven't been able to confirm it yet, but I believe that that court case in September will be all seven of them at once. And we'll bring you more on that story in the future video. All right, we're going to move on to Friday Yacht Spot. Now we've got a few yachts here. Most of yacht, Motor Yacht I Dynasty. This is laid up in Malaga, I believe. It's a 100 meter or 328 foot super yacht built by Petersworth in Germany in 2015. Now the yacht can carry 22 guests in 15 cabins and has a crew of 30. It's valued at around $200 million. And the yacht is a four and a half thousand gross ton yacht. So it's very uh, voluminous. Um, the yacht was owned by Kazakhstan businessman, uh, Alejan Abragimov, according to Super Yacht Fan until his death in 2021. Currently, current ownership is unknown. We'll move on to uh, another yacht. This was spotted in Corfu, and it was sent in by a subscriber who re referred to himself as simply Elliot as an unknown yacht. Uh, can you tell what it is yet? Uh, if you said Moti Yacht Aviva, then give yourself a pat on the back. Now, Aviva is owned by the British billionaire Joe Lewis. He, is, uh, also, he also owns Tottenham Football Club. Now, the yacht was built in 2017 and replaced his older yacht, also named the Viva, which was a 68-meter vessel. This vessel was built by Aberking and Rasmussen, and it has a gross tonnage of 5,000. The yacht has a paddle tennis court right in the middle, as Mr. Lewis likes to play. I'm not sure if he still wants, still wants to play. He is 87 years old now. He used to play tennis whilst on board with the crew, and he's very passionate about playing that game. All right, guys, remember to check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash If you want to support the channel, this is a great way to do it. We've posted some videos on the Dali topic from last week, and we've also got some behind the scenes footage and various uh, patron chat videos. Uh, if you've got any information for us about any of the stories, please be sure to get in touch. You can get us in the ticker tape uh, address there. You can get us on the about page of the YouTube channel. You can get us on Instagram, on Facebook Messenger, on Twitter, and on Threema. Be sure to like this video, very important for the algorithm. Hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell for future notifications. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching. And whatever you're doing this weekend, whether you're working or having the weekend off, I hope you have a great one. All right, guys, thanks very much. And I'll catch up with you soon. Bye-bye.